Hello, I am Simulator Dirk, and welcome to The Bus, or if I was to use some Simpsons humour, The Bus, The, is The Bus, Early Access Disclaimer, because it's an early access, you're in the opening stages, this has been recorded about a week after release, but I don't think much has changed in the first week, and hats off to the developers for this early access dis- disclaimer because you don't often see it in game and you see this before you get to choose anything else thank you for participating in the early access of the bus this game is still in alpha you need to be aware that this game is not final and thus offers limited content and features will have serious performance issues might often crash or not even start at all You might lose your save games and progress. We'll receive updates that will change the experience. There will be bugs, a lot of bugs, seriously a lot of bugs. So if you are A-OK with the above, please continue and help us develop a great experience. Hello, I'm Simulator Deck and welcome back to the bus, welcome to Berlin, welcome to a very snowy Berlin. It's Christmas time, it's cold, it's snowy, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, hard to believe but it's 8 o'clock in the morning. It's an awful day to be outside, our passengers are waiting for us. So let's get on the bus and let's get underway. Let's get our passengers bus. So we'll start up our bus, get on the air, we'll put our, our details in.
can't see anybody around. We are at Alexander Platz heading again to Teagle Airport. And for the last of this batch, before there's any further updates, I thought that I would um, do this do this snowy bus episode a Christmas episode if you will even though I am recording this in mid-April snow is something that's really hard snow is something that's really hard to get right um, in video games in sims in Driving games, especially. stoppies all at 8 o'clock it's 802 now So I'm just going to keep an eye on it, 
group as we get around the uh, construction zone that's taking up the bus lane. It's something that I'm going to keep an eye on. Because how are you supposed to be on time? Um, supposed to be on time when the uh, departure time, the arrival and departure time for the stops on route isn't correct because I can, and I haven't really noticed it until now, oops, I haven't really noticed it until now, and it's like I've just picked a random time on a random date you know this is one thing that should be right from day one Or whatever. Um, 
essential workers who are working Christmas Day know that it's part of the job and by and large, I know for me personally, as long as I'm home on, on Christmas Day for one of the meals, and I haven't been a big Christmas guy for years, um, as long as I'm home for one of the meals, it's, it's okay. You know, I'd actually much rather be working Christmas Day and if I'm working Christmas Day, well that might mean that somebody who's got a large family, um, large family with kids, etc. Um, or maybe they're, they're at home. And if they're, if they're at home, enjoying their time with their family, etc. Um, while I'm... Easy. You know, just like us out work, working Christmas Day. I don't know if they're going to have a greater role to play um, in future updates. The timetable is still showing us as arriving and departing at 8 o'clock, so clearly that's broken. Um, I'll be interested to go back through previous videos and see if that's the case. If it's something that's happened all the time, but I just haven't noticed. What I'll do after, after I finish this trip, I'll make, it's actually a way, if you press F1, uh, you can actually make a report of a bug Side you can actually make a report inside came rather than having to use email or whatever, you just press F1, type it in and send it off uh, in the game. And I'm actually looking to do that because that to me, um, I don't know if that is a thing that's always been happening I this is my fourth episode that I know that I've recorded properly plus there's been others that I had to scrap I'm up to about 10 hours gameplay and it's the first time that I've noticed it I've noticed that I've run late and I've put down to there that traffic weather the way I've been driving But I'm, I might even go through it at the end of this episode, have a look at, um, just have a quick scrub through one of the previous episodes and see if that's always been the case and I just haven't noticed it. And I'll be able to tell that very, very quickly. And in the time that it takes me to run a promo, um, I would basically know that. Everything else on the Robert Koch Platz. Everything on that and it's on the display um, on the bottom right hand corner, which is where I'm getting the information as well. 
working correctly, the distance to the next stop, um, the name of the next stop, I'm just taking it for granted that that's correct. I don't know the, I don't know most of the stops well enough to be able to tell you that at the moment. Um, but the speed ought to be correct. itself in 1080 no, not in 20 by 1080 and then on the right hand side I have my recording software which is OBS Studio and I've got a bit of room on the other side um, for uh, for anything else that I need hate that sound um, So what I do on the front of the 
is that I had s I had set up um, my what's the name of that thing? Task manager. My task manager up. And so I could think, see things like um, CPU load and everything like that. And in one video, I went step by step and like every 10 or 15 minutes, and I'd actually do a. Um, thank you, Mr. Truck, that was helpful. Um, I'd do a. I'd do a screen cap of my total, of my whole screen task manager wouldn't appear in, in game on, on the episode and I'm like well okay at the 15 minute mark uh, my CPU and my GPU uh, was doing XYZ and then when the game crashed this happened here are my stats you know here's what I'm running blah 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 and they're like we think we may have a fix we're working on we're working on some patches right now um, see how you go and it would always work out that I couldn't get from one end of the route to the other without a game crash and then one particular day I got to the end of the route before the hour mark and so I managed to get through to the end of the route and I thought, oh, but I didn't take notice of the time. First of all, all I said was, oh, you beauty, I've made it to the end of the round. And there hasn't been a crash. That's awesome. Maybe the patches that they've put out have worked. But what it turned out to be was that as I was getting more experience and I was not spending so much time at stations, not spending so much time talking, when I was about to start the route and I was coming into stations I was operating the route faster so whereas it would take me an hour before and I wouldn't even get to the end of the route um, I managed to do the route one day in about 45 or 50 minutes this meant was it wasn't a result of anything that the, the developers had done to get rid of the problem that I was having and I hadn't done anything like I hadn't upgraded the computer or, or anything like that what had actually happened was I was just driving the tram faster and driving the tram better and running closer to the actual timetable so I was able to get whole route done um, before you know before the hour march now I have to wait here because there's a taxi blocking the intersection amongst others he's probably got vehicles in front of him as well so I'm gonna have to wait here until the next cycle oh do something easy just don't drive past In time to come, that'd be nice if the um, police saw something like that. We're just able to pull him over, give him a bit of a whoop whoop, and just pull him over. And then later on, there were more game patches, and also in that time, I doubled my memory on my computer. Um, so I hadn't really had a problem with Tramsim for a while, and this was my this was my argument. My argument basically went on the lines of I could run things well like Wreckfest which is really really heavy on graphics damage. There's a lot happening. I could run GTA. I could run trams, um, train simulators and bus simulators and all this sort of stuff. I could do all that. So why can't you know why can't the tram sim Why can't that, you know, do the same? And I mean, you know, things, things worked out in the end. Things worked 
out in the end and it was and it was all good. And at the time of recording I am just waiting for a new a new add-on for Transim. In a way it's been a bit hard to find out information about it because most of the um, promotion that's gone on about it has been in German. You know, German game developers, etc. Um, very little in English. And, you know, this is normally a problem that non-English speakers have, where there's a lot of, in a lot of information in English, but it's not necessarily translated to their language. Now, we've cramped him and to a degree the, this, this game as well, the bus um, was similar you know there's a huge German audience for it sure and you know and I appreciate that and I appreciate that the game set in Germany, the game developed in Germany etc but um, some English would be good and it's just that, you know, I've seen, you know, I've seen some videos and etc. And it's like, oh, okay, I can figure out what's going on. But, um, you know, the, the shoe is on the other foot. And it is, in a way, first world problems. But, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an issue. And then you get the occasional person. And even in the, uh, even in the comment sections for the videos, etc. Um, most of the replies to are in German, so you get the occasional person who types in English can probably speak English and German. I oh, know that's not me. and what he's what he's discovered recently and what he's made a real effort of doing um, starting with his most popular videos um, he's going back and he's actually subtitling all of his videos now his videos are usually a lot shorter than mine and 
so it's a lot easier for him to go back and, and subtitle them and um, you can actually turn on subtitles on YouTube and they'll do a and they'll do an auto translate or an auto subtitle um, sometimes that's good and sometimes it's not so good um, I have had to laugh, I do also live sports commentary and I've had to laugh at some of the laugh at some of the subtitles that come up um, you know, and it's not easy you know, and it's, it's automatically it's automatically generated and it wouldn't be easy, especially if the, um, for instance, ice hockey commentary, is, which is one of the things that I commentate on, you know, for automatic subtitles on that, I know it's not, it's not easy, and I couldn't imagine having to go back through and manually subtitle everything that I've done, everything that I've said, and then I've also got a, um, got a, um, co-commentator as well so it's just not me and to be able to do that you know it's a fast moving it's a fast moving sport so to be able to get everything right even for someone who does Say if I was to get for a later and try and subtitle um, what we were saying later on, it would be extremely, extremely difficult. Now, I actually had the pleasure of going to a a talk, a presentation by a lady who does subtitles and translations for TV. In China, um, one of my favourite shows on TV, even though I haven't watched it in a while, um, it's a Chinese dating show and in English it's translated to as if you were the one. And it's on, t it's on TV in Australia on SBS Viceland occasionally. It really fluctuates when it's on. It's all over the place in the um, programming department, etc. Um, but Australia is one of the, outside China, one of the most, um, the biggest audiences for the show. And what it, what it basically is, there's a massive gender imbalance in China because of the one child policy in the previous years, even though that's not a thing now. And so there's a lot more women than what there are men over there, so there's a massive imbalance. So there's 24 women who are looking for a date, and there's one guy who comes on to try and impress them, and they do. Um, the guys do a video about them, do videos about themselves and the 24 girls are watching and if they like the guy they leave their light on and then if they don't like him they can turn their lights off and they can't date him and it can happen where all 24 girls say, no, I don't like this guy, they turn their lights off, he goes home, fails to get a date. Sometimes in those videos, it's really obvious when the guy says something really, really bad, which the girls don't like, and you hear what I call a tsunami, where you just hear all these sound effects going, <laughs> And, and that's the sound that the um, that's the sound effects that they have to indicate that the girls have lost interest and they turn their lights off. Oops. So they so they turn their lights off. Hello, 
you would like to hear up my story and want a simple A and B. Yeah, you can tell when somebody's done something, when someone might have said something really bad because you just hear, and it's, it can sound like, you know, lots of different noise at the same time. It's like, pew, 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 and, and you know the guy said something really bad. But the thing, but the thing about it is that the show, it's in Mandarin for you. The show's in Mandarin. Spoiler alert, I can't understand Mandarin. I, I don't know many words. I know Shesha, which is thank you. Um, CC, I think is yes. Although, if I'm remembering, it's been a while since I've watched. Um, but, the, but the thing is, for the Australian, for the Australian audience, um, the show is subtitled into English, and the subtitles and the noise cues and the sound effects really help um, the Australian audience, a lot of whom aren't Chinese, um, they, they understand what's going on. I was listening to the head subtitler for the show and I could listen to her talk all day and it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating subject. But what she was saying, um, I've gone down the wrong street. Oh dear. This is not going to be good. Um, what have I got behind me? It's an interesting question. Nothing, fortunately. Actually, I might do this in this mode. up for all the cars that have crashed into me. Anywho, the way she explained it was that the important thing is to get the message across and that you can read. Reading is a lot slower than talking. So if you are and, and um, Mandarin is a very fast language and there's lots of regional dialects and that sort of thing. Um, tones important, volumes important, speed and pitch and pace are important. And so when you've got somebody who is talking a foreign language very fast, and then you've got, say in Mandarin, you've got an English audience trying to read the subtitles because they're no hope of understanding what's going on without the subtitles. 
the subtitles are basically a summary of what was said. Now, it's not always a um, very quick, it's not a word for word transcript. It's not like, um, I don't know about other countries, but in Australia, I know you can look up online and they used to print out, I don't know if they still do. What happened in, in Parliament, and it's a word for word transcript, it'd be like a court transcript as well. And in that, in that situation, it is written word for word in a document, and in Parliament it's called Hansard.
things are incorrect but it's very very fascinating anywho we are here at Seagull it's still showing that we're due to arrive at 8 o'clock it's now 8.44 so we are probably running pretty well on timetable apart from my little stuff up where I was too busy telling a story it went to play And that is our route complete. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, what I am actually going to do now, I'm going to run a little bit of a promo and then I am going to see exactly um, if I can see in another episode. Uh, the situation about the time table, which didn't change. I'm Simulate Dirk, back in a minute.
there we have it, Middle Eastern Truck Simulator, one of the many vehicle simulators that we have on Simulated Urk. Anywho, I went through and I quickly had a look at the previous route and the previous episode and it did exactly the same thing. The departure time basically remained static for the whole time on the actual timetable and so that definitely is a feature that I'll bring to their attention. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Anywho, I am Simulator Dirk. Stay tuned for future episodes of the bus. I'm Erk. I'm Simulator Dirk. I've been riding the bus. You've been riding the bus. And we'll see you next time on the bus. The bus, the. Bye-bye for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.